down the line gonna ski that race come rain or shine gonna ski that race come sleep hail gonna giddy 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 up down the trail celebrate celebrate dance to the music celebrate celebrate dance to the music we got 50 down and more to go so pack that trail with your man-made snow and groom it high tight and fast i'm ready to kick some cross-country Celebrate, celebrate, dance to the music. Celebrate, celebrate, dance to the music. Old Omicron won't slow me down as I ski across the lake towards town. I'm locked and loaded with a booster jab and swabbed and tested by a certified lab. Celebrate, celebrate, dance to the music. Come on now, <laughs> celebrate, celebrate, dance to the music. Still, it ain't the same, I'm well aware. When we finish the race, we got masks to wear. We got six feet between you and me, but we're both above ground and breathing free. Celebrate, celebrate, dance to the music. Come on now, celebrate, celebrate, dance to the music. We got 50 years on down the line. Gonna ski that race come rain or shine. Gonna ski that race come sleet or hail. Gonna giddy, giddy, giddy up down the trail. Celebrate, celebrate, dance to the music. Celebrate, celebrate, dance to the music. Giddy up now, celebrate, celebrate, dance to the music. Celebrate, celebrate. Dr. Kwamba, what are you doing back here? You're supposed to be in your dressing room. Knock it off with the Dr. Kwamba already, please. Okay, okay. Lenny, 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 look. We've got to go on in five minutes, okay? You're supposed to be in the dressing room. You're supposed to be getting into your costume. I saw three people not wearing a mask. Are they wearing masks? Yeah, everybody's wearing a mask. All the performers are wearing masks. It's They're too on. dangerous, the droplets. Have you not seen the droplets? I can see the droplets when the spotlight was on me in rehearsal. Droplets! You suck the droplets in. COVID! I haven't seen the droplets. Personally, myself, I haven't seen them. I believe they're there, and I believe that if they hit the light at the right angle, you could see them. But right now, I need you to kind of pull yourself together. I need more time. I How need much time. time do you need, Lenny? I need time. Are we to talking be sure. five minutes? Are we talking ten? I need to tell the stage manager. Are they that they presented vaccine cards as we discussed? They have presented vaccine cards. And they're cards, wearing masks. And they're wearing masks. And I want a six foot, I want a 12 foot rope between me and any other whoa, human. Whoa, 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 12 feet? I thought it was six feet. I am trying to have an abundance of caution here. You do not understand the magnitude of the risk that we are taking in this space. There's no ventilation. This okay. isn't an okay. airplane. Okay. There's no circulation of air at the paradise. Okay. None. Okay, I got you. I know that's been an issue in the past. We're working on the ventilation. It's important that I live. My work is not done. I understand. I understand, Lenny. Just take a deep breath. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Go. Okay, ten minutes. And I need some more of the disinfectant, please. Okay, more disinfectant backstage, please. Ten minutes, Lenny. <laughs> Lenny, five minutes. Five minutes to places. <laughs> it's you, it's what's, too dangerous. It's not. It's not. Why are you weeping, Lenny? Have you been I, into the Red Bull again? I have had some Red Bull. 
I haven't been in front of another human being in three months. It's going well. I don't want to break a trend that's proving to be a positive. It's okay, Lenny. You got five minutes to get it together. Someone's calling me. It's probably my attorney. Okay, take the call. They hung up. Five minutes. Okay, five minutes. <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> I'm coughing now. Okay, five. Five minutes to places. <laughs>
six feet in the ground Till I'm six feet in the ground St. Patrick's, I can hear the wedding bells throwing rice at the forsaken as they're wishing them farewell. I'm thinking about sweet Lisa, can't say where she is today. I wonder if she still remembers or if she recognized this place. It's Chisholm, Minnesota, it's Aliquippa in PA, Slack like in Bait One, West Virginia. Where our stories fade away And I don't know If this will ever be alright Just pray God lights a star For you and steel In Bethlehem and I My whole life They said the writing's on the wall There's nothing left but rust and trouble For us at this union hall But in my mind I'm still The year is 1894. The setting is a remote cabin in northern Kanabe County. The season is winter. The wind howls. The wind howls louder. There's a knock at the door. There is a gunshot. Then a scream. Come along on a journey of nearly unbearable suspense as we go deeper, then deeper, and deeper still into the swamp. In the last episode, we discovered that Peter might have inadvertently infected vast regions of rural Minnesota with a mysterious virus after returning from a trip to Norway. Further complicating the situation, we learned of a love triangle of Euclidean proportions. It seems that Rachel, wife of Peter, is actually in love with John, who is married to her sister Mary. Oh, Peter, I can't believe you were so stupid. I took every precaution, Rachel. You visited the wet market in Oslo. I wore a kerchief upon my face. It wasn't an N95 mask, was it? Well, no, but I doused it in kerosene. You what? And I gargled with a mixture of molasses and hydroxychloroquine. Oh, Peter. That's a concoction for horses. But a man on the train told me. And you believe everything a man on a train tells you? He was a cowboy. He knew a lot about horses. <laughs> what was that? I didn't hear anything. Who is it? Peter. Put down the gun. These are desperate times, Rachel, and people resort to desperate measures. Rachel, it's me, John. Please open the door. John, I ask you to never darken our doorstep again. Peter, please, I can explain. I don't need an explanation. I need you to leave immediately. Oh, please, Peter. Where's your humanity? My humanity rests firmly on the trigger of my rifle whenever a scoundrel such as he pounds upon my door. <laughs> what was that? Get down! It's Mary. Mary! Mary? She's shooting at me. 
Why would my dear sister Mary ever do something as violent and horrific as fire a weapon in the direction of her loving husband? She's discovered my secret diary, Rachel. Oh, no. Oh, yes. <coughs> so she knows? She knows. Everything? Everything. The longing glances, the secret embraces, the stolen kisses, the weekend at the hotel in Duluth? Yes, yes, everything, everything. Your fondness for cross-dressing in leather and lace? No, she doesn't know about that. <laughs> Yet! That does it, Rachel! Does what? I have no choice, Rachel, but to evict you from our home. Peter, you can't be serious. Oh, I am. Quite. Grab your coat and your hat and your mittens and be on oh, your way. You are throwing me up in the midst of this hellacious blizzard? I will not stand idly by and be cuckolded by a man who dresses in lace. Peter, I thought you were open-minded. Everyone has their limits, Rachel, and you and John have caused me to reach mine. Now be off with you. Oh, Peter! No, Peter, stop! Let go of me, Rachel! Oh, Lord! Mm, oh, <laughs> Peter, what are you doing out here? Get your hands off me, you lout! I thought you were Rachel. Well, it seems we had a bit of a tussle, and... Somehow I got booted instead of Rachel. You got what you deserve, you lousy coward. Rachel, oh. dearest Rachel, please let me in. Are you fully vaccinated? Rachel, dearest Rachel, I still am your legally wed spouse, and it is I whom you should invite to cross your sacred threshold. <laughs> well, let me think about this for a minute. Rachel! Rachel! Will Rachel open the door for her frisky and adventurous paramour, John? Or will she return to the dull conventional ways of her husband, Peter? Will she let them both in? Will she lock them both out? Tune in for the answer to these and other pertinent questions on the next episode of Into the Swamp. Elixir of love, elixir of love, you gotta get yourself elixir of love. Elixir of love, elixir of love, you gotta get yourself elixir of love. Thank you, Carl Ove. That's Dr. Kwamba's elixir of love now available in the supersized vacation barrel, as well as handy four and eight ounce bottles. Available only online at drkwambasmedicineshow.com. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Paradise Stage, direct from San Francisco, California, Mr. Yoo-Hoo!
come te tre pizze per la barra treat now ladies and gentlemen Leighton Wilkeny a wonderful wonderful person he's one of the writers for the uh, Vasa radio show uh, he's also has power of attorney over my estate should something happen to me like COVID and uh, he has put together a beautiful uh, song uh, a, a piece for voice and piano uh, this piece uh, he's often referred to as the Stephen Sondheim of Mora uh, his piece tonight for your pleasure is knucklehead knucklehead and uh, please welcome Leighton Wilkeny rock star without any type of connection with rock music. How many times can I watch them poke each other in the eye before I start to cry? I guess I just don't know. How many days will pass before I hear Curly's yuck yuck laugh Or see a ball being hammer smashed Against his shiny head Let's ask Larry Moe and Curly Surely they will know Knucklehead, knucklehead, all the funny comedians are dead. Ball beam hammers bouncing off their heads will not be seen again. Knucklehead, knucklehead, slapstick comedy is dead. Cerebral humor in its stead. Making us repine. Will I ever see most tender nose pinches or hear the pipe wrench ringing as it strikes their numb skull skulls? And will I ever see? Shavings plain from Larry's head Or will I have to watch this old house instead? I guess I just don't know Let's ask Larry Moe and Curly Go 
knucklehead, knucklehead All the funny comedians are dead All being hammers bouncing off their heads Will not be seen again Knucklehead, knucklehead Slapstick comedy is dead Cerebral humor in its stead Making us repine. How many times can I watch them poke each other in the eye before I start to cry? I guess I just don't know. For another treat now here at the Vasa Radio Hour, I think you're going to be thrilled. Gary and Wendy were in the first Vasa Radio Hour years ago, uh, predates radio in fact. They were doing it like uh, through smoke signals. <laughs> Just kidding, they were on the radio as well. Gary and Wendy here tonight to perform something that I think will get you back into the 20s and the 30s vibe, like a detective vibe. I'm talking about Gar Noir. Gar Noir for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, presented by the incomparable Gary and Wendy. Please. Let them know you love them. A cold night in a city that knows how to put on a ski race. But one man, still very lonely, lonely man, is still trying to find the answers to life's persistent questions. Gare Noir, Private Eye. It is yet another February, a cold, cold February. The kind that makes you feel like the icy fingers of winter have worked their way under your smart wool microweight long underwear bottoms. I mean, it is cold. It's like getting a hernia check from your ex-wife. The windows of my office have that familiar thin sheet of ice on the inside. Outside, the wind is howling, blowing so hard that the ice on the inside cracks. As I bend down to pick up the ice before it melts, there is a vigorous knock on the door, which apparently causes more ice to fall. I yell, come on in, as the door opens, and there, there stands the most voluptuous, tempting morsel I've ever seen. She is a figure that could bring about a cardiac arrest in a Yeti. And what a body. She has long legs that start at the floor and go all the way up to that body. It, by the way, goes all the way up to her neck. Something tells me I've seen this body before, and that neck, even that neck looks familiar. But the face, the face I don't recognize, maybe it's age affecting me, or maybe it's the mask. Dropping back down to the body, I realize I'm starting to warm up. And then she spoke. Mr. Noir. And more ice cracks. Mr. Noir, private eye. Well, that's me, sweetheart. Do I know you? Oh, Mr. Noir, it's... It's... Call me Gare, sweetie. Uh, who might you be? It's me. My name is Ula. Ula Inga Hansen Benson Janssen Holland Tallinn Svaden Svansen. Ula? Yeah, it's me. Ula? Yeah, Gare. Ula, where have you been? It's been years since I've seen you. After that last show, you just disappeared. Where have you been? I've been in quarantine. For three years? You can't be too safe, you know. Well... Maybe be, since it's just the two of us here now, you could lose the mask. Are you vaccinated? Fully and boosted. Can I see your vaccination card? Uh, um, sure. Hang on. Here. 
There. Okay, then. So, Ula, you seem rather overly protective. What brings you out of quarantine? I need your help, Gare Noir. What is it this time? Well, as you may know, the Vasalopad is celebrating 50 years this year. I did hear that. I need to find. I need to find. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, a good way to help them celebrate. I see, I see. A good way to help them celebrate the... During a pandemic. Yes, during a pandemic. It's just so hard. You see, it's important for the town, the state, the county, to be aware of how the Vasa Lopet started. You mean that whole King Vasa story? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. She does. She does. And it all started in our sister city of Mora, Finland. Sweden. What? Mora, Sweden, our sister city. Are you sure? Yes, quite, quite sure. Anyway, King Lopet was opposed to the evil... King who? Did you say King Lopet? Yeah, to King Lopet. That wasn't his name. Yeah, it was. The Vasa Lopet is named after the King of Finland. Sweden. Whatever. Okay, Sveden, and the race is named after him. Uh, that part is true, but it was King Vasa. Vasa was his name, not Lopet. How do you know? Well, unlike you, I looked over the scripts from the last few years. Where did you get your information? Some professor online named Pedia. Professor Pedia? Not Professor Wikipedia. Yeah, that's oh, him. No. And he wrote that King Lopet from Finland traveled through Kwamba to Afghanistan to save the people of Mora. Whoa, I see. Uh, you know, maybe that's enough history for now, Ula. You came to ask me to help you find a way to help the Mora Vasa Lopet celebrate its 50th year? Yeah. So let, let's kick around some ideas. One thought that I had was to make a gold wreath to put over the wiener's head. The wiener's head? You know, the first woman and man who finished the race, the wiener. Oh, oh, the winner. You know, that joke's so old I didn't recognize it right away. But a gold wreath? That would be very expensive. Yeah, and I don't have that kind of money. Oh, that would be a lot of money. Hey, how about a gift certificate to Sporties? So they could all get the amazing hash browns. Oh, that would just give them the gas. Oh, that's right. You know, I think Roger was there this morning. Really? Oh, yeah. You mean he? Yep. Right in front of you? In front of me, behind me, and even to the side of me. Oh, that's terrible. <clears throat> oh, those hash browns will do it to you. Yeah, they will. But not, not to you. Oh, no. I mean, I can't imagine oh, you ever... Oh, no, I wouldn't. Uh, say, I don't. Say, Ula? Ever. Ula? W would you like to have breakfast with me sometime? Oh, Gare, are you flirting with me again? Well, I just, I mean, um, I mean, yes. Oh, Gare, this is just so sudden. I wasn't expecting sudden? you. Sudden? We've been doing this show for ten years. I know, but I've been in quarantine for three of those years, and I feel a need to get to know you again. <sighs> I see. I'm not saying no to breakfast. I'm just saying... Can we take it slow? Oh, yes, Ula. Y yes, we can. Thank you, Gare Noir. Now we were talking about the ways to celebrate. Yes, and we agreed that the hash browns at Sporties is a bad idea. A very bad idea indeed. Hey, what about a year's supply of bleach so the town can drink it and kill the virus from the inside? And you thought I was the dumb one in this sketch. Well, I just thought, you know, I mean, there's this virus and it... Bleach kills the germs and... What about a kazoo fanfare? A kazoo fanfare? That sounds more ridiculous than the bleach. Where are we even going to get kazoos? I have a couple of my kazoos in my Krenskula purse. You do, huh? Yeah, I do. All Krenskulas carry kazoos in their purses for emergencies. I don't think I want to know why, but okay, let's, let's give it a try. <laughs> Stupid, you have to hum into it. Oh, okay. KFC good for you? <coughs> you might need a little tuning. <coughs> uh. <laughs> okay, I guess, okay. Okay, then let's give it a try. <coughs> mm. Mm. That's not so good, is no. it? I thought the music idea would do the trick. Well, I like the music idea, but... <sighs> Not the kazoos or the fanfare. Well, what else can we do that's musical? Hey, here's an idea. It's musical and inexpensive. 
What if we give the city an autographed Gaucho Gear vinyl album? Yeah, they're only 10 bucks at Ace Hardware, and it's loaded with country western hits. Still trying to sell those stupid albums? No, we can do better than that. Better than Gaucho Gear? I'd like to see that. You know, he's a legend in these parts. What we need is an old familiar tune with the theme of celebration in it. Rewrite the words a bit and voila. Hmm, I'm with you. Let's see. Um, all, all I need is a guitar. Oh, here we are. Here's a guitar. Uh, okay, um, well, let's, let's try this. Um, <clears throat> 50 years of the Vasilopet. Oh, that's a good one. Thank you. Got my skis on and I'm trying not to fall. Glenn and his dream of the Vasilopet. It's nice of you to honor Glenn. I thought so. This is the night to go to the Paradise Hall. Well, where do we go from here? I don't know. Oh, what about this? Satin and lace, don't you look pretty? Why, thank you, Garrett. You're welcome. Sorry I didn't have time to call. It was short notice. Yes, it was, but ready or not. I'm ready. We're going to make it to the city. What's in the city? Well, this is the night to go to the Paradise Hall. 